Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Hello guys, welcome to Play by Play Podcast. My name is Patrick Bergman. And where is Ferdi? Well, as I decided with Ferdi, I will make like introduction podcast about myself to talk about my story, my uh, childhood, what got me to the point we are here, the future goal with Play by Play podcast. So uh, keep keep watching because uh, that's your occasion to to get some to get some insights from my side. Okay, so. Because I don't have anyone on the other side, so I'm just basically talking to myself. I will pull up ChatGPT to propose me some uh, potential questions that I could uh, answer on the podcast today, okay? Just give me a second. Can you make some questions for Patrick? Okay, here we go. What inspired you to start play-by-play podcast and what do you hope to achieve through it? Okay? So... Me and Ahmed started a play-by-play podcast because we really wanted to put our knowledge online. So me, myself, I finished my bachelor degree as a football coach, as well as I have some degrees from football analytics and scouting curse. So this is like my education I have. And in the same time, I'm a football player with uh, loads and loads of experience from playing in Poland, in playing in uh, England, playing in Norway, as well as I was in trials in Italy, in uh, Germany, in Wales. I have played a tournament in France as well, so I could see the culture over there. This gives me enough experience to then share it online with you guys. Okay. And the... when it comes to Ferdi, I would like him to to explain uh, his his side. But uh, from my side, it was that uh, I wanted to to put my knowledge out uh, online. And uh, what do I hope to to achieve through it? Yeah, uh, my goal would be to inspire upcoming football players, especially in the ages of 14, 18, as well as players that are already playing, so eighteen to thirty five but not only aspire to give them rare, valuable knowledge. That's the key thing. Rare, valuable knowledge that they can implement right now. That they can hear how is it to play in the UK? How is it to play in Germany? How to deal with uh, negative thoughts? What to do when you don't have uh, any training partner? Everything. Everything what you need to know about becoming a professional football player, this podcast is for you. Okay, next question. Can you share a bit about your background and journey in football that led you to where you are today? So uh, I a bit uh, answered this question, but uh, let me just just, uh, share some some insights from from day one. So I started playing football at the age of uh, six. But uh, actually, football was not my first sport. Uh, it was swimming. So I was I was pretty good as, as a young kid uh, in swimming. And uh, I was doing this up to when I was maybe eight. I think eight, yeah. Eight years old. And I was really, really good. I, my father used to, used to say that I, I uh, swim like a turbo. So, uh, yeah, I had a big, uh, big talent in, uh, in uh, big talent in swimming. As well as I was training karate, not as regularly as swimming, but uh, I was doing it as well. But uh, in the same time, football, every every kid is playing football. So I was playing football as well. I started as a goalkeeper and uh, I was stronger than other kids. So I was just uh, catching the ball in the hands and I was just kicking it from, from the other side of the goal to another. So uh, that was my style. And... Uh, I uh, joined my first team uh, when I was like uh, eight years old, yeah, eight years old. And uh, my first kick, I remember my first kick with the ball was a shot in the post. So, uh, yeah, imagine if I scored a goal with my first uh, shot, but it was unfortunately a a post. 
I was in, in like an academy in uh, Konstantin, that's like uh, one city a little bit outside Warsaw. And I was playing there for a year, I think. I think a year, yeah. I think a year. And after that, I, I just uh, lost uh, lost a bit of motivation because uh, the coach said that uh, only elite kids can train here. And uh, he suggested me to to he suggested to my mother to to take me to another team. So like I lost a bit of motivation, but uh, eventually I joined some new team and uh, I was uh, playing there for maybe six months. And uh, oddly enough, uh, the parents has like meetings. Okay, so the parents had some uh, some uh, meetings with another parents and uh, with the coaches to discuss the the plans for the season and the payments and blah, blah, blah. And uh, my mother, as she is very disagreeing with uh, a lot of stuff, uh, she she disagreed with the coach and uh, and uh, not only coach, but also the president uh, regarding a trip to, regarding a camp to, to uh, that I would, I could be a part of. And uh, the president in the club said, uh, why don't you open your own football club and uh, you will have nobody to to you you can do what you want basically so she said you know what i will actually do that so uh, she started in 2008 she started uh, i was uh, all yeah i was 9 years old so it was january 2008 she started her own football club where i was uh, playing for seven years seven years i think yeah so i was in uh, in my mother's academy for seven years uh, after that uh, after that i went to a team that is uh, i went to my senior team at the age of uh, 17 i played uh, in seventh polish division and uh, after uh, after that I decided to drop down to junior football. So that was a bad, bad choice, in my opinion, for me. I dropped down to junior football again to play in the highest junior division in Poland. So like it was always my, always my dream to, to play in the highest junior division because uh, especially for me from a small town outside Warsaw, uh, everyone was looking up to Legia Warsaw and uh, the kids were... The kids were playing in uh, in this top league, uh, playing against the other top uh, top junior teams in Poland. That I really wanted to achieve it, and uh, I achieved it. But uh, looking back, I I think it would be better for me to even stay in this team, in the senior team I played, because my philosophy is to play with the senior players as soon as possible, even like in, in the age of fourteen. So. Uh, after that, uh, after a season in uh, in there, I went to a team in Polish fourth division, where uh, I was I was so disappointed with the coaching, and uh, that's like one story I said. Uh, I think I said this on the podcast. Uh, I was not getting much playtime, and I asked the coach, uh, coach, uh, what can I do to become uh, become better because I have big goals uh, in football and I I really want to develop. He said. Uh, Go to study your shit, and this uh, this uh, words just stuck in me, and I was just just crying, and uh, seriously, I didn't know what to do. So I uh, called to my father and uh, and just complained and uh, said, "What can I do? I, I don't know what I can do. I I really want to play football." And uh, my dad said, "Why don't you come to Norway?" So that's what I did. Uh, I came to Norway and. Uh, I signed for a team in Norwegian third division, but throughout the year I haven't played a single minute for the first team official official game for the first team. So I was playing in sparring games, but not not in the league games. And I was on the bench in second team, on the fucking bench in the second team. There I met a coach that uh, I really disliked. <laughs> My guy was, I was a first team player and my guy was not even putting me in <laughs> into the games of the second team. Like, can you imagine that? Like, the, for me, this is crazy. How can you be a first team player that doesn't even get the minutes for the second team? 
So it was uh, it was truly a tra traumatic uh, traumatic episode, but uh, but uh, one good thing came from that is I had a good coach in the first team. That was a Croatian coach, and uh, he said, "Patrick, you should change position." So I was playing as a midfielder. He said that I should, uh, I should play as a center back because I might have a good opportunity and potential to do good in uh, in this position. So I was like, okay, yeah. It uh, I could be talking for the whole podcast about that, but uh, let me just just fast forward, okay? Then I, uh, then I played as a center back for five years. After a year after making this decision, I went to England. I was playing in the non-league in England, and uh, just uh, just before the corona started, I was actually training with the best team in Wales in the Welsh Premier League, Connex Key. And uh, unfortunately, corona started that year, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't do anything, couldn't sign, couldn't do anything. So I had to go back to Norway. And uh, then after uh, after coming back to England, uh, after when the corona was a bit milder, I couldn't find a team in England. So I decided that, okay, let me go back to Poland. So uh, I was in Poland for two years, uh, two, two years, uh, I think two years I played the, I played the, the highest in third division in Poland in the one of the best teams in third division as well. Where I also had uh, traumatic stories, but uh, as I said, it yeah, I could be talking all the time about that. And then uh, in 2023, last year, I decided to come back to Norway. I was in Norway. I uh, joined a very nice team. I was playing, and then I got a red card in the first league game. So I was playing in the sparring games, but then in the first league game, I got a red card in like 86 minutes. And when I came back, I needed to get this much tempo. The coach uh, put me as a striker for the last like five minutes of the game. And my dad said that I was one of the best players on the pitch <laughs> in five minutes because I created two chances and I was just, just so good. So uh, from that, uh, the coach said, yeah, you're a striker now. Uh, so... Uh, after the season, uh, I joined the second division team in Norway, where I'm currently at, and uh, as a striker. And uh, that's the, the status right now. Okay, Oof, tough question. Uh, challenges, I think I covered. Uh, could you discuss your training regimen and how it uh, has evolved over the years to keep up with the demands of football nowadays? Okay, that's a good one. I used to be the player that was just training all the time, like I'm talking five hours a day. And uh, I was just, just grinding myself to nothing. So uh, there is like one thing that I, I see I see, uh, I see from many players, they try to compensate with trainings for the lack of uh, success in football. So they don't mean so they don't play in the games and they just train, 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 train. All the time train, train, train without taking a break. And what's the most important is the freshness in the games. And this took me, this took me in my whole career to understand. And uh, like especially me, I, I'm the guy that I need to convince myself all the time that I'm good. I'm sure anyone can relate, but uh, all the time I need to convince myself that I'm good. Because uh, because of bad experiences from the past from football, so uh, yeah, players like me they just need to train all the time, and uh, subconsciously I was I was not aware that uh, training much without recovering can uh, destroy your body from the inside. So I started having knee pains, getting some uh, some overload injuries. So bro, I got so many overload injuries. And uh, I was also training wrong in the gym. So as uh, as probably you should know, after the few last podcasts, I said that I was training much uh, as a bodybuilder. I was doing the bench press. I was doing the, even not the bench press, even the machine press, uh, doing all of this uh, bodybuilding stuff. And I kept, kept on getting injured. So like we said on the other podcast that if you want to do bodybuilding, you can do that, but make sure your core is engaged. So like, uh, for example, in push-ups, for example, in pull-ups, 
For example, uh, when you do a press up, you just stand on one foot, for example, one uh, one leg, for example. So, uh, yeah, that was it. And uh, I was doing so much bodybuilding because uh, when I was uh, when I was younger, I was fat. Then the puberty came, and I did not lose this fat, but I got long, and then I had the rack on me. So I was uh, I was skinny fat, how you call uh, as you call it. So I was all my career I was struggling with uh, with high look, and I tried to compensate this as uh, as soon as possible with the bodybuilding training. Yes, to add to to everything, uh, I was I was having fantastic mentors. I was having a Premier League coach. I was having a Premier League uh, physical coach. I was having a Premier League strength strength and conditioning coach. I was having English national team mental coach. I was having a Premier League nutritionist. So, uh, guys, I know everything. Okay, <laughs> I know really everything. It's uh, I'm just loaded with knowledge that I just cannot wait to share it with you. Can you share a memorable? moment of or match from your career that significantly impacted you i would say the moment uh, the, as i said uh, with his coach he said i'm i'm shit like uh, as you should know from uh, previous podcasts uh, when i was a kid i had a big ego so uh, i was like uh, are you a football player no so fuck you i don't give a fuck about your advice so that was me as a kid and then suddenly I'm 19, so uh, so fresh adult, and uh, somebody is telling me that I'm shit, and uh, I was just just heartbroken, and uh, and I think this moment uh, changed me as a person, as a player, and I said that I will prove this fucker wrong. So uh, every single no, every single disappointment, every single negative situation is all written in my brain, and I. I, I'm a bit psychotic, but I, I remember every single negative conversation with anyone about my football, every single uh, failure, everything I just remember. And uh, that's that's the way I am. And, uh, and uh, it is good in one way because it gives me the dark energy that I can tap into when I'm feeling tired or when I feel that uh, oh, today is not the day to train and I just remember this coach saying that I'm shit and I train. Uh, oh, as someone who has transitioned between positions in football, what insights can you share about adaptability and versatility in sports? Guys, this is this is important one, okay? There is one quote that I love. As you get more information, your dream should evolve, okay? So if you do something for a long time, you will be getting more and more insights, more information. So you will actually find out what works, what doesn't work. And that that makes your dream evolve because you get more information. So like I started as a midfielder. I was playing as a number 10, number 8, even number 6. And uh, then I had a coach that uh, that said, uh, because of your size uh, and, and your good ball skills, I think you should uh, play as a centre-back. And that's what I did for five years. But then I got new informations and uh, I actually realised that uh, I love scoring goals. I love being a striker. I love dribbling. And uh, that's the position I'm currently playing, one year in. And uh, this is where I see myself the next uh, many years. So to to add about uh, the importance of it is uh, is yeah you need to you need to you need to evolve all the time you need to evolve because the trends in football especially they are just changing all the time. What advice would you give to young athletes aspiring to play professionally based on your own experiences and lesson learned? I have so many advices, okay? Let me give you one from my head. You need to understand that if you want to do something extraordinary, the odds are already against you. It's not high odds that you will achieve your dreams. And why would you have your mind against you? Okay? So let let that sink in and uh, just think about it, that... uh, 
they call it self is hard and to, uh, why would you have yourself against you as well okay so make everything in the head support you to get to your goal because that's the best and that's the only support you're going to have everyone else will be supporting you conditionally that's that's like the reality of of being a man is that uh, everything is conditional so uh, everyone will support you up to the point if you don't produce results then they will just give up on you so uh, they might give up on you but you should never give up on yourself and uh, take it take it with you are there specific football philosophies or tactics that resonate with you the most and why that's an interesting one uh, first of all uh, play with the senior players as soon as possible second play football as much as possible like uh, i when i was a kid my dad told me to make sure i do thousand touches thousand touches on the ball every day so i used to i used to take the ball with me everywhere i had a quite big house so i was just jumping between uh, dribbling between the furniture and uh, i was also having this one uh, one kilometer road from my house to the school and i was just juggling and juggling the whole one kilometer without letting the ball uh, drop on the ground eventually after after doing this every day so like uh, football was just glued to my my feet and uh, and i think that uh, every kid should have the ball with every kid that wants to play football should have the ball with them as much as possible what are your thoughts on the current state of football development and the opportunities it presents for future generations if you have uh, i think when you have people like me and ahmed it gets easier to become professional football players because we just tell you we have been tr- through the journey we know what it takes and uh, and uh, you can just do things much quicker like uh, we spoke on another podcast that uh, if i would have the knowledge i have now at 16 i would play i would be playing for my national team and i would be playing for one of the biggest academies in uh, in the world seriously because much of much of it is just the knowledge and uh, pair this with having a mentor pair this with uh, having a talent you have a unstoppable package uh, can you describe a typical day in your life during the football season versus the off season that's the one thing that i changed in my career the last three years i stopped having off season so uh, for me every every week is in season obviously when it's uh, when it's pre-season it's a bit of a different uh, training regimen but uh, there is not nothing like off season uh, for me so uh, i'm try i'm i'm playing football every year every day and uh, that's what keeps me injury free because the more you play football the more injury resistant you become because your body is familiar to the movements that you do on the football pitch like guys i i used to be the guy that was doing much of injury prevention stuff the cute uh, cute nordic hamstring the uh, copenhagens and still getting injured the best thing you can do is to play football I'm telling you guys play football as much as possible and we spoke uh, on the previous podcast make sure you reach your top speeds uh, frequently because that's the that's the ability that you lose the the quickest looking ahead what are your goals and ambitions for the future both in football and beyond okay goals yes goals that's the topic that uh, we should make another podcast on that but uh, i observe that once you get older your goals uh, change like as a little bit about my my uh, advice is that uh, your dreams are evolving once you get more information so you might pin it together but uh, i'm saying that especially now when i'm an individual coach and i help kids become uh, better football players many young kids are thinking about being best in the history 
but then once they get older, the goals go down, down, down. So, for example, from being best in the history, yeah, best in the world. From being best in the world, okay, yeah, best uh, in, in the league, okay. From being best in the league, okay, uh, playing for national team, okay. Maybe not playing for the national team, but playing for the highest league in, uh, in Norway and uh, so on and so on. So uh, many people lose the drive, lose the lose the ambition that they had when they were kids and i think you should still keep it <laughs> keep it with you because uh, the amount of work you're going to do if your goal is being best in the history versus being in norwegian third division is just uh, impossible to to even uh, even uh, compare like when your goal is to be best in the history you're going to be much more ambition, much more uh, focused, much more focused, especially on the little details. That when you are, when your goal is to be a uh, third division, is is good for me. Maybe to make some money in football. You're not focused. You you will take some day offs. You will uh, you will uh, choose other things uh, over football. You will basically sell yourself for the for the dreams you had as a kid. So my goal is to win the Champions League. That's the goal that I gave to myself and I will stick to it. No matter what. You see, Hosselu. Hosselu is sick. Like I'm a, I'm a Real Madrid fan and Hosselu, aged 33, 32. Last year he got uh, transferred to Real Madrid. Aged 33, he won the Champions League. Do you think five years ago he was thinking that he's going to win the Champions League? <laughs> No way. So uh, that's uh, that's that's my goal. Yeah, win the Champions League. Okay. Okay. As it's loading, uh, let me let me give, let me tell you how I met Ferdi. Why is it actually Ferdi? <laughs> he should explain this uh, himself. But uh, how I met Ahmed uh, when I was in England. Uh, I uh, met uh, Coach Carter, <laughs> real life Coach Carter. We will also make a podcast about that. Uh, and he said to me that I need the individual sessions. Uh, and he proposed that uh, that I should contact uh, Ferdi. And uh, ah, fuck that. Okay, no que- no more questions. I will just freestyle. Uh, the, the he said that I should contact some uh, individual uh, contact uh, Ferdi, the individual coach. And he gave me this his number, so I'm contacting this guy. And uh, yes, Ahmed, uh, I would like to to train with you. When can we have a session? And uh, we had a session, and uh, it clicked, bro. It uh, we had a so good connection, and uh, he teach me stuff I I did not know before. But uh, but uh, we we had uh, like this this like bro connection that you could see from from day one, and uh, I kept on training maybe like two. Two more times with him, and uh, then uh, we just decided that no, we are we are too, <laughs> we are too similar. We should be friends, so uh, we became friends. And uh, and uh, after after a few weeks, I think uh, he uh, I I said to him that listen, bro, I I li- uh, I'm in very much into self development. I study very much. I read many books. I had a uh, few mentors uh, at that time, especially. And I said, I would like to share the knowledge with you because I think if we combine uh, my work uh, work ethic with your work ethic, we, t- we can achieve the double of the of the output. And uh, it's been now six, uh, five years, five years since I know him, five years since I know him and uh, we started the podcast together. So uh, he, yeah, he's truly my best friend and... Uh, I'm very happy to have him in my life, and uh, we both developed, we both grew a lot the last uh, the last five years, and uh, hopefully many many years to come. Okay, next topic. I can uh, tell you a bit about uh, how was it in Germany and Italy. So uh, I was on trials in uh, both Germany and Italy. In Italy, when I was nineteen, so after the after the episode in the highest junior division in Poland, I got an opportunity to come over to Italy and play in the fifth division. 
in uh, in Sicily in the team called uh, Rafa Dali. So I was there for uh, I supposed to be there for two weeks. Uh, I went there together with my father and uh, all the stories from there. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we went there and uh, it was uh, things that I have never experienced in my life before. But uh, yeah, I was there in this Rafa Dali. After a week, uh, they wanted to sign me. Also, I made uh, some interesting record, but at the age of 19, I played my first game against professionals. So we played against Serie C team and I played 45 minutes as a center midfielder. And uh, they wanted to sign me. So uh, they wanted to sign me, and the next day, <laughs> the club got bankrupt. <laughs> so uh, that was that was it from Rafa Dali, and uh, my overall experience with Italy is uh, people are crazy. <laughs> people love football, but they are also, also crazy. They are like very intense in uh, in their football judgment in uh, everything. Like one time they love you, then the next time they hate you, but then they love you again, and they they just they are very moody. When it comes to Germany, I was uh, in Germany two years ago. Two years ago, yeah, two years here, two years ago in uh, fifth German division, I was training with the team for one week, and uh, they also wanted to sign me. But uh, I said no, because uh, I just don't fit the German people, the German culture. Like it was the first time ever after after training, I, I saw everyone drinking beers. And that was like a mandatory thing that everyone had to do. So uh, I could never see myself uh, living uh, far away from, uh, from my family and uh, playing in, uh, in a team that... Uh, that uh, was just drinking, drinking beers after sessions. Like, that's not my style. I have never drunk alcohol in my life. So, uh, yeah, that was that was not a good fit. Uh, what I can tell you also, what I can tell you also is, uh, I can also say about my, I will also say about my experience from uh, World Premier League. That was, uh, that was the second best uh, team I have been to. The best team is uh, the one that I'm currently in. But uh, the Connex Key team uh, was second best uh, that I had. It was first time I experienced uh, professionalism. So I was 20, 22. And uh, it was, uh, it was uh, things like GPS vests, like uh, analysis of the games, like uh, individual talks with the players. Like we had even yogas with, before the sessions, like... Uh, uh, the recovery sessions they were training also twice a day so uh, that's something that I have never experienced before and I, I really liked uh, my time in Konakski but uh, unfortunately it couldn't uh, it couldn't happen and uh, I'm just having only positive fe feelings from this team to be honest so I don't want I don't want to say everything because uh, I would like to write a book later in my life like first, uh, obviously, I need to. I would like to. Like you don't need to necessarily achieve uh, much things to to write a book. But uh, who will write? Who will read this book if you haven't achieved uh, much? So uh, I want to to write a book in uh, in twenty years, fifty years. Who knows uh, where I will be in uh, in few in few years? But uh, and that's why I don't want to to tell you everything like I told you much but not with the with the full details any questions just let me know and I will uh, definitely answer them and uh, keep on training keep on working hard because uh, it's written in the stars at the end the most important thing is to stick to your goals the first feeling that you have inside you if you really wanted to be a football player when you were a kid but then some somebody took you away from this goal you should revisit it. That's that's. Think about that. Okay. So it's been a bit of a weird one. Uh, first time ever talking uh, to the camera for forty minutes. But I hope you got some value and uh, catch you next time. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.